Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build Arendelle. This is the castle kingdom from the Disney movie Frozen. It's where Elsa and Anna spend most of their days until, of course, the events of the movie happen and everything goes crazy. Now we're using Halcyon Days and, uh, and a few shaders for this build, but the nether brick and nether brick steps have been retextured to be this kind of cerulean blue, just like the rooftops in the movie Frozen. In the last episode we built most of the house, but there's still a lot of it missing. Pretty much half of it is still missing. So without further ado, let's get busy and get building. Now, the big window on the left of the house, the front of the house, the left, is not quite as big as it should be. So I came back and I adjusted the size there, adding in the dirt blocks and the hatches for the flower boxes, increasing the size of the window itself, and adding more blue bricks to make the roof a bit higher and a bit pointier. Now it was time to come around to the other side of the building, and I wanted to put in two windows on this side. In the castle in the movie, there is a large window on the left, and two smaller windows on the right. But to get to a place where I could put those windows in, I had to first put down the blue bricks for the first and second levels of the lower roof. Then with those in place, I copy and pasted in some stone brick, and added in these glowstone blocks to light it up in the night. And as you can see, it's looking a lot prettier now over this side of the castle. Now I added in some stone brick along the bottom of the castle. This is the main foundation of the building, the main walls. This is where the, all the balls take place and like the, the ground floor. It's the most grand and, and large area of the castle. So I had to add in some stone brick there, added some of the quartz blocks, quartz and chiseled quartz, which in this texture pack is a kind of white clay with uh, with wooden struts to hold it in place. Now with the walls at the bottom done pretty much, or at least for the moment, I came up top and redesigned loosely the windows on the right. Now I wanted to raise the window on the left. You see me copy and pasting there. I've actually raised the height of the left roof, of the left window roof, just a bit. So it's a little bit bigger now even more. And then I came over here and started to build these two smaller windows on the right. Now, because it's the same window twice, I decided to build just one roof, just one window roof. And then once I was happy with the design, copy and paste it over on the right. Just like that. And there we go. Pretty much two windows, a large window. And now it was time to come along to the roof and I just used blocks there previously, just plain old bricks. Now I'm replacing those bricks with brick steps to make it a bit more smoother and, uh, and to exaggerate the, the ramps and the slopes on the building. Now it took me a long time to copy and paste this in, but it's worth it because as you can see it going in, you can definitely see the building become a lot smoother and more detailed but there's still even more detail to go in and once I've completed this I'm still gonna have to add a lot of ridges just like in the bottom left of the castle to the roof to make sure it looks nice and patterned and intricate. Now with the roof smooth it was time to come over to the right of the building and chip away at these extra blue blocks on the end because I'd miscalculated the size of the roof. I trimmed it up on the left but not the right so there was extra roof to be removed. Now I'm using coloured blocks here to count how big that section in the middle is so that I can put two evenly spaced window frames on the rooftop section right there and you can see there once, I, once I'm happy with the location and the size of the window I put it in with the blue cerulean blocks, gave it a stone brick frame support to hold it up, added a flower box with, again, some hatches and some pretty flowers, put a window in there, a torch of course to light it up in the night, and then once again copy and pasted it over to the other side of the roof because yeah, hey, it's the same window just over the other side. And I liked the window so much that I figured I would copy and paste it down to the lower sections of the roof here as well. And what this does is it fills up that large, big, plain section of blue roof with extra detail. So I put two in this side and two in the other. Now unfortunately the, the incline on the middle section of roof is much steeper 
than the outside section, so I had to do a bit of tinkering to make sure that the roof sat appropriately with the windows. And now with all four windows, or rather six windows in place, I came around to these two towers on the left and the right. Now the main spire in the middle goes up the highest, but there are two equally sharp spires on the left and the right of the roof. And so what I'm doing is I'm building the left one first, and then I'm going to copy that over to the right. But getting this correct was quite tricky. I didn't make it perfectly uh, symmetrical, this one. It's slightly flatter along the along the horizontal. It's, it squeezes together with the roof. And I wanted to make sure that the, uh, the actual rooftop section, the actual spike on this, is appropriately pointy. So I did remove my first draft, my first rough drawing, my first rough go at the roof, and came back and redesigned the roof section to make it look a bit more like a pointy arrow ready to pierce the sky if you were to load a castle into your bow, but luckily we're not going to do that. And again, I'm using the uh, the rotate and copy and paste tools to make it so I only have to do two corners of this building, two corners of the roof section, and then I can just copy those over, rotate them 180, and paste them at the diagonally opposite side. Oh, and there we go. Doesn't that look like a really sharp arrow? Ready to pierce the sky? I think so. And as we spin around, you can see it's pretty much symmetrical. I tidy it up here and there, chiseling away at the blue cerulean and adding a few steps. But I also wanted to add a window to this section of tower, so you see me here just digging away at the stone brick to put in some glass panes, some quartz blocks to give it a bit of, you know, detail behind the windows. And then I used stone brick steps on the top and the bottom of the windows, upside down and right way up, just to add even more detail to these window sections hiding a few torches underneath the roof to light it up in the night, and then we were ready to copy and paste it over to the other side of the building. And the first thing I wanted to copy and paste was the roof section itself. Then I mapped down with cobblestone to make sure, with, uh, with stone brick to make sure it was in the right place. And then I copy and pasted the rest of it over to keep it all symmetrical. Then again, using that same window design on the central tower with the quartz blocks, the glass panes, and the upside down and right way up stone bricks. Oh, I'm getting excited now, we're almost there. Then I put some quartz in the top tower section, just to add a bit of detail there as well. Now it's time to come down to the bottom of the castle, and yeah, we're going to repeat these pillars on the left over onto the right. So I'm copy and pasting that here. Took me a while to get it right, but once I did get it right, it was just a case of simply copying and pasting. Then I turned the floor underneath it to wood, and started to build around with these stone slabs as decoration around the outside wall of the ground floor. Now again, I might make these walls down the bottom a bit more intricate and add a bit more design, because this is a, this is a large, rich fantasy castle that deserves a bit more ornamentation. Now once I'd swept around the back, you can't see me right now, I've gone off camera to paste in some more columns and to, to get the back of the building looking uh, just like the front. But once I was done, I came around the front, and now it's time to tackle the main entrance. Now this leans out a little bit from the uh, from the main building itself, because that triangle roof section leans forward. So I put in some quartz blocks, because I really like the effect of these quartz blocks underneath the blue roof. I separated it with some wooden planks, so that it didn't look too plain. And then for this window section, what I'm doing is I'm digging inside, putting a layer of quartz behind it, adding a glowstone block, and then putting glass in front of it. But the quartz was too bright, so I replaced it with some wooden planks. Now it was time to stone brick up the main entrance as well, adding quartz and chiseled quartz here and there for detail and decoration. Then you see these wooden support struts on the left and the right of the main entrance section, just to add again more detail and make it look a bit more vibrant and colorful. Now I put down some cerulean bricks as framework for the canopy roof. And then once that was in the right position, I replaced those with the stair version. And then I built down with the stone brick to start creating the entrance. Now for the entrance, I wanted it to be quite detailed, but not too big. It's not like a massive door, but it's big enough for a few people to get through. So again, I used this chiseled quartz and glass pane effect for decoration and created a large three block doorway. Initially, I left it open, but then I put in some wooden planks and some wooden fences to make it look like a real door. It doesn't function like one, but it definitely looks like it could be a real castle door. 
And there we go, that's pretty much it for this episode. We haven't quite finished the castle, and you'll see what I mean when we sweep around the back in just a second, because there's a lot of trimming up and tidying to do around the back of the castle. But we've definitely got the front of the castle design pretty much in place. There's details to go and we're going to have to brace the walls with those ridged sections like we have on the other sections of the walls. And of course there's going to be windows at the back so that people in the castle can't only face one way and so that when the sun's on the other side of the world, you're still going to get some light in there. Next episode we're going to try and do that. We're also going to work on the tower section because around the left of the castle there is a, there is a circular kind of drum tower that connects to the castle itself. But we'll save that for next episode. I've been Stjin, hit like and favourite and subscribe, and I'll see you next time when we get one step closer to finishing Arendelle from Frozen. Take care.